There is a great <coughs> statement that was taught to us uh, in Kulliyat al-Da'wa in Azhar. It's called and uh, well known as Da'aruf of the Da'wa. Da'aruf has many meanings, but getting to know who you're dealing with before you give da'wah. And so what I want to talk about today is <coughs> even though in general Carl Jung's idea of the introvert and extrovert uh, type of personalities uh, as expressed by the personalities of Abu Bakr and Uthman radiallahu anhum ajma'in uh, the companions of the Prophet like that uh, is correct. Uh, they are the Siddiqin, they look internally to themselves. And uh, sometimes people consider, you know, Siddiqin wa Shuhada wa Salihin to be kind of like ranks. This is uh, not 100% correct. There is that ranking in a sense, but, uh, you know, Umar radiallahu anhu was considered amongst the Shuhada by the Prophet when he was on the mountain of Uhud and it was, uh, the mountain was shaking. So he said, you know, uh, there is a Siddiq and two Shuhada. So Shuhada is the, you know, the, you have the introverts and the extroverts. The introverts are those who look to their inner selves to see the truth. And extroverts, they, they want to see, you can say, the ex external things, the external reality, the facts that they can see. And they're not so much concerned with their inner self speaking to them but the external self. This is why when Abu Bakr when he heard the call of Islam, he didn't need to, he needed to only look inwards towards himself. So this, you know, Siddiqina wa Shuhada, and then was Salihin, I can't go into the, the, the details of these types of personalities, but, so this is an essentially correct <coughs> distinction that, uh, that there are the uh, Siddiqin and Shuhada in terms of personality. Then it is also uh, true that there are things that mold us based upon our environments, you know, for example. So I'm going to give you seven in total because one is, is the person introvert or extrovert will tell you what type of information that he or she is interested in or would be interested in, in determining, in, in learning about Islam. So if they're introvert, they would uh, be more interested in the ideas and the concepts you can say. Uh, both introvert and extrovert, Umar radiallahu anh became Muslim by reading Qur'an. So introvert and extrovert, they, the Qur'an has the same effect upon them. They're just their impression of Qur'an, because this is the, the, the vast, vastness of the Qur'an, that no matter what your personality is, it has an impact on you. You can be somebody in the village, who just lives in the nature and the Qur'an will have the same impact on you and will make as sense to you as somebody who is a great intellectual. A giant intellectual will feel Qur'an was came down at my level, you know. But the person who is in the village will feel the Qur'an is speaking to me too. As the Qur'an says, فِيهِ ذِكْرُكُمْ In this Qur'an is the mention of you. You are in this Qur'an. Anyhow, <clears throat> so there will be more invert personalities, uh, concepts that they may be interested in would be ayahs like وَلَا تَكُونُكَ الَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهَ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنْفُسَهُمْ Do not be like those people who, when they uh, forgot Allah, uh, Allah, for, Allah, got, Allah made them forget themselves. Okay, and uh, in the same way, uh, the extroverts they may be interested in science, so on and so forth. Concepts of philosophy like justice, introverts, um, even justice would do with shuhada, depending upon its external manifestation. The philosophical aspect would be more introverts; they would look into themselves. But then now let me discuss this even further. So there are going to be generally 
there are going to be six types of people. You can try, and, and some may have a mixture of something, but this will at least help you, if you're doing that, will help you have an idea of what you need to present to the person and how you need to present to the person. So one is a person who wants to be very down to the earth. He wants straightforward answers. No, don't beat about the bush, just tell me what it is. So this is one group of people. And the Bedouins of Arabia, they were like this. If you read the book, uh, Hayat al-Sahaba, you will find that the Prophet's way of doing da'wah many times was very, very straightforward. This is the Qur'an that came to me. He would read the Qur'an and it would mention what it wants from the believers and so on and so forth. Like in Allah Ya'murukum al Adli wa Lihsani wa in one narration for example the Prophet just read this ayah. In Allah Ya'amuru he read other ayahs but this was one of it. Uh in Allah Ya'amurukum al Adli wa Lihsan the ayahs we read during Jummah in Allah Ya'amurukum al Adli wa Lihsani wa wa Ida is al Qurba wa Yan Haan al Fahshai wa al Munkari wa al Baghi. You know, very simple. This is what Allah said. This is my message. So very straightforward. Another type of person, <clears throat> he wants to, you know, because that will has to do with your fitra, your goodness of your nature. Because if there's, if your nature is corrupted, then you're not going to be a truth seeker. If your nature is intact, you're going to be a truth seeker. You, you want to know what's the truth. But then there are, you know, in your world there are chains. So one of them, he wants a consensus. You know, he wants to know what his wife will feel, or what his, or her husband will feel, what her children will feel, what relatives will feel, what the friends will feel, what other people will feel, so on and so forth. How, how uh, he or she will be received. So this is part of, and also taking consensus in terms of what is your opinion about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What is your opinion about Islam? What is your opinion about Quran? And this can be done uh, positively or negatively depending upon the person. You're doing da'wah to them and then they're going to uh, take opinions from many different people and if these this group of people if they accept Islam it will not be quick it will be a very very long it'll take a, a long process because of the reservations that they have and you need to be aware of that when you're doing da'wah to people like that that this is you know this is their concerns and you need to be aware of those concerns if you see it but you know, you, you, you start and then you try, have to try to see because this is one of the great things of the Prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they were able to be perfect communicators to all human personalities which is a miracle in itself and uh, <clears throat> so you know even the best marketing team can only appeal to a certain demographic a certain type of people and advertisement that uh, that targets a certain group of people and that's just how marketing is I mean even the best uh, commercials that's the best you can do but the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they were able to reach everyone equally and this was one of the great things uh, uh, this one of the aspects key features about the prophet being a rusul you know especially about being a rusul is that he was a it is not upon us to, except to convey completely and clearly and then you have, you can say, the uh, people who are <coughs> the, you know, they, they are, you can say, innovative. They are interested in interesting ideas, new ideas. We want a new world, give us new ideas. What is the Islamic system of, of judiciary? What is the Islamic system of, how does Islam see family different than the rest of the world. How does Islam see justice different from the rest of the world? So on and so forth. So they, they want they want fresh ideas. They don't they're not happy. Creative people are not happy with the way things are. They want something new. And uh, creative people will be <coughs> uh, creative people is gonna be hard to deal with. People that are more on the creative side. And uh, there's many reasons for this, but uh, I'm not going to go into that. But creative people, you know, they are very expressive of their uh, self. And uh, it's, it's hard to, uh, if they're stuck on some issue, it's going to be hard. It's, it's, it's going to take a lot of work to get them out of that 
uh, issue that they're stuck in. Um, another group of people, for example, um, that would be, um, so you also have, for example, <coughs> the people that need friends and relations. They're like the Salihun. They are interested and, and they just, you know, people are lonely. And they need friends and they need to see how sincere you are with them. So it's not so much about the me message, but it is about the, the friendship, the relationship, would it, the meaningfulness of this new relationship. This is why it is said that treat every non-Muslim as a Muslim because this is what will help them understand that what it means to be Muslim. So friendship, a lot of people, a lot of people even leave Islam because of friendships nowadays, especially in high school, the younger crowd. And a lot of people will come into Islam because of friendship, because of the community, because of a sense of support system, so on and so forth. This is a human need that in modern times is very much lacking and uh, it is, uh, it is it, you know, it is very much in need. And so if they see that there's friendship, so one thing like this is more important than you're doing one-on-one -on -one da'wah to this person. It is more important that you help socialize this person with your other friends. And this should be generally true in many, many cases, not just but specifically for this person, he wants, you know, he wants, he wants friends. He wants to have a sense of belonging, or she wants to have a sense of belonging. So this is very important. Then you have the skeptical people. <coughs> the skeptical people will also want to, generally speaking, argue also. And they are not necessarily, uh, they have one, one line of, generally, uh, one line of thinking. Over here also amongst the skepticals there are going to be some that are argue and if it gets into argument it might become negative. Another thing is, is that they don't want to see too much passion in you. They don't want to see too much enthusiasm in you because then it's like you're trying to sell me something. And especially with something like Islam they don't or something that has to do with truth they don't necessarily want to see that. You have to be kind of like this is the facts it is what it is you know, you got to just deal with it type attitude rather than being enthusiastic. Like, for example, the person I mentioned before who wants friends, you know, they want to see enthusiasm, you know. They, they need to feel that relationship, that connection. And they're willing to listen to you as long as they have that connection in many cases. Um, but a skeptic, you know, he wants to keep it very formal. Send me an email, you know, show me what you got. Um... Uh, and then, you know, I'll think about it. And this also person would take uh, some time to uh, accept uh, the, the truth. It would take some time. Then you have also the analytical person. He is more like, I need to see a spreadsheet. A spreadsheet. He is uh, also, he's more of a dialogue person. He wants to have a dialogue. He doesn't want to argue. He wants to see the facts, he wants to see a spreadsheet, he wants to see a diagram, he wants to see something. And he wants to see what he's looking at. He wants to see Islam, in this case, from many different perspectives. Not from one perspective, but from many different perspectives. He wants to thoroughly understand Islam, so he's also going to take time. I want to read the whole of Quran, or, you know, he really wants to feel like he knows what he's getting into. Uh, and so for this person, for example, it would be good to give him a lot of books to answer his questions that he has. He will ask the questions and he will ask himself and then you have to answer and then he's going to look at Islam from many different perspectives. So a lot of what I have said, uh, you know, you will uh, see this anytime you're doing da'wah. But uh, the main thing is, is that, you know, you keep a good attitude and you listen and you try to understand where they're coming from and then the six categories seven categories introvert extrovert and then the others that i've given you will help you inshallah deal with the person and how to sell islam to them give islam to them uh how you can um uh you know win them in the war of ideas in this world jazakumullah khairan assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah